Welcome to the desert of the real. days of the dumb nigger are numbered. We have collectively peeped out your dumb nigger ways, your dumb nigger anti-African values, and your it's cool to be dumb ideology. Listen up and listen up good. Your time is almost up. Peace family, this is Mr. Holipsism. Um, this is my 200th YouTube video. So this is something that I wanted to do sort of to set the tone for what's going to come in the future. Um, as if I haven't already done that. And um, I want to, this 200 video to just be a declaration of war against the dumb nigger. Um, we have an ideological war going on. And we've got a lot of ideological clearing up to do so that we can get um, centered and focused and gain a collective consensus on what needs to be done as a people. And if order, in order for us to do that, we have to address some major, major turds in the punch bowl. Now, when I say dumb nigger, I'm talking about three different branches of dumb nigger. Now, there are other branch there's other, you know, subcategories that fall under these branches, but I've narrowed it down to three as an overriding overarching category. Um not in any particular order. You have um the proud to be dumb nigger. That's one category with a lot of subgroups under that. Then you got the bootlicking Negro nigger, dumb nigger, and there's subcategories to that. And then you got the conscious dumb nigger. Now, the proud to be dumb nigger, this is the type of nigger that doesn't know anything and doesn't want to. They actually take great pride in being ignorant. They, um, you know, remember that scene from Menace to Society when homeboy Jack carjacked the dude and he said, yo, man, we supposed to be brothers. And the dude said, uh, what, you trying to be smart? You trying to kick knowledge? This is the type of dumb nigga I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? It's like anything having to do with anything involving common sense, anything that have to do with reading, anything that have to do with learning, you know, that's not hardcore enough. That's not that's not real enough. Because for them, the proud to be dumb nigga, ignorance is real. If you know too much, you're being fake. But if you don't know shit, then you're just keeping it real. Um, that ideology used to work. As a matter of fact, after minutes it worked for a while. Your time is almost Now these type of um proud to be dumb niggas, they they weren't they're not necessarily white ass kissers consciously. Like I don't think I think that they consider themselves black. You hear them use that term black. They consider themselves black, but they don't 
consider themselves African. And that's based mostly on ignorance more than anything conscious. You know what I'm saying? It's like they don't know shit, so of course, you know, that would be the ideology that they would have. But they're not white ass kisses in that in a conscious level. I don't think that they um would ever consciously say that white people are better than them. But what they do is they don't understand that they're working within a Eurocentric paradigm. So they operate as with a European mindset, but unconsciously. They don't realize it because this is all they know. So they just assume that this is reality. They never did any real thorough, deep research of history and epistemology of, of African people or ancient people um, compared to this Western civilization. So as far as they can tell everything is the way it's supposed to be when it comes to child rearing when it comes to marriage and relationships when it comes to the monetary system forms of government everything is just the way that it's always been since the beginning of time you know so that's the the proud to be dumb nigga and then you have my personal favorite the boot licking negro dumb nigga this type of nigga is what I what I like to refer to as a defeated African. Um, there are lots of different terminologies that you can use to categorize these guys. Um, my brother Kamal McCasey the Hootie calls them militant integrationists. Um, their ideology of black folks within this current system, especially here in America, is they've delegated black people to basically be the family pet of white folks or you know the mouse in the house of rich white folks and when I say the family pet what I mean is usually most families love the family pet you know they have they provide a nice home for it they they give it good food to eat groom it you know depending on the level usually in a rich house they really take care of their pets um, love the pet. The pet comes in, jumps on every. Oh, everybody just loves the pet. That's the family pet, family dog. But if the family was ever sitting down at the dinner table, and the dog happened to jump up on a chair and try to eat off the table, everybody in the family would collectively swing at that dog, throw something at it, and get it off of that table and out of that chair so that it can know its place this is what the um, bootlicking negro dumb nigga endorses um, the mouse in the house analogy is simple they are not trying to challenge white people's authority they're not trying to challenge their white slave masters or uh, challenge this white supremacist construct that African people exist in what they want is their piece of you know their little piece or slice of it they're like mice in the house they eat the crumbs that fall from the table of their masters and just try to take it back to the little hole so they can live their little existence the people that they really get mad at is somebody who's trying to control the house you are going to become the subject of their angst the moment you say I don't want to be in this hole no more I think we should have control of the house you're going to be a big problem for the bootlegger negro um, the bootlegger negro intellectualizes self-hate and rationalizes hate in their own so they it's funny how they pull this off they have a or they try to present a cultural aesthetic but when you peel off the layers of it you will see that it's merely that's like window dressing so they can pull you in and then when they pull you in, they're going to be kicking so much anti-African, anti-black rhetoric. And it's going to be rational. It's going to be, you know, intellectual, intellectualized and the whole nine yards. Some of the biggest bootlicking Negroes are very educated. So when they make an argument to show you how you ain't shit, you know, it's from a scholarly perspective. You know, they're going to scholastically show you how you're not shit. <laughs> also the funny part about them is they want black women to follow them and their biggest source of problem is that the black women don't listen to them but 
they want the black woman to acknowledge their manhood when they don't even they they voluntarily ceded their manhood to the white man they're basically the white man's wife you know they they find their richness and their wealth from being on the arm of their white husband basically making him the white man's bitch so that's the bootlicking negro dumb nigga then last but not least the one that's got me probably in the most trouble the conscious dumb nigga hi what can i say the conscious dumb nigga is what the five percent is called the ten percent the person who knows the truth but uses it for you know to manipulate the masses um they profit and they hustle from the collective ignorance of the 85 percent which is the masses and um the knowledge that they they achieve the quote end quote knowledge is basically used to boost their self-esteem and to get them some ass you usually find a lot like there's an idiot on um youtube i won't even say his name but this guy <laughs> well, I can't even say what he calls himself because that'll give it away. But this guy actually didn't know. He calls himself a conscious dude, and he doesn't even know who Amos Wilson is. You know, I mean, so I asked him, I'm like, well, if you don't know Amos Wilson, do you know um, Chancellor Williams? Do you know John Henry Clark? Do you know any of these people? Or how did you get your wisdom? Did you just like get into the lotus position, close your eyes, and you became wit wise? Anyway. These guys are the type of guys that you see hanging around high schools, grown ass men like in their thirties, hanging around high school, trying to kick some conscious game on some little girl who don't know no better and looks at you like you the reincarnation of Malcolm X. These guys have no interest in um, nationhood, no interest in mobilizing and consolidating and networking with people of like mind. They use consciousness like some new brand of sneaker that just came out. And most of the most of the brands they wearing is really old brands. You know, like they got on the old um Atlanta Hawks jersey or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't have any um they don't update their 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 knowledge. They're not just static and stuck back in the eighties. They also um muddy the ideological water you know they have that cultural aesthetic a little bit more than the bootlicking negro dumb nigga does they have that cultural aesthetic and it allows them to pull black folks in because you know like the masses will see you with your cultural aesthetic or your locks or your jashiki or your staff or whatever you rocking and they'll think oh this guy is knowledgeable and they'll pull him in but usually once they get inside they take the masses away from anything african centered and they take you into some realm of mu they take you into some asiatic realm they take you outside of africa into imaginary continents and whatever they ideologically muddy the waters so that the people can never get any type of ideological clarity and get African centered. Centered around a, the name of a land with a culture and a history. Because that's, that's it. That's black nationalism, African nationalism, pan-Africanism 101. The very name, John Henry Clark said it, the very name that you call yourself has to reflect a land, a culture, in a history if it does not reflect those things that you are not properly named and I'm not gonna go into well it's not called Africa it's called Africa because the Romans call it Africa no idiot not true and actually Asiatic is a Greek word so what you like Greeks over Romans you know but I ain't gonna get into that discussion the, the real reality is this Everyone knows where Africa is. Everyone know what Africa is called. It's called Africa at this present state and time. So, and as far as I'm concerned, until you get control of the land, you can't rename shit, niggas. 
So that's so it is what it is. Africa is the richest land on the continent. Africa, oh no, on, sorry, the richest land on the planet. Africa is the continent. Duh. And also, the mother of all civilization. So if you're not going to claim that, and you're going to claim some imaginary land and some imaginary history and some imaginary culture, then you're irrelevant to the discussion of African power. But you know, the internet is really doing a toll on the conscious nigga. Because that shit they used to get away with in the 80s, they can't get away with now. There used to be a time where you can get out on the streets and say whatever you want to say because nobody can back it up. But now when you make claims, you got people out here chewing your ass up. Number one on my list of brothers who, who do it is my brother Shaka and Dugu Kemet. That's my family. And he tears these dudes up using your own words. And you got my brother Medje Commander doing major work. You got the Amin Ra squad doing major work. So, bottom line, the days of the dumb nigga are numbered. And your time is almost up. Whole lot of people just can't seem to fit in to where things seem to be going. Like you, CJ. See, the black race can't afford you no more. Oh, there used to be a time we'd see somebody like you singing, clowning, yassa bossing, and we wouldn't do anything. Folks like that. You were good, homey kind of nigga. When they needed somebody to mistreat, call a name or two, they paraded you. Reminded them of the good old days. Not no more. The day of the Geechee is gone, boy. And you going with it. 